A very good morning to all the doctors and everybody who have joined the webinar today. It's a pleasure for us to have you all here. This is Dr. Shivangi Singh and I feel very opportunate that I have gotten this opportunity to present the topic Manage Allergic Rhinitis Effectively with Revolter Opus. And I'm very thankful to the BGN RX and BGN Publication for giving me this opportunity to present this topic in front of you all. So let's begin with the introduction. A symptomatic disorder of nose induced by an IgE mediated inflammation after allergen exposure associated with episodic attacks of sneezing, watery rhinorrhea and watering of the eyes may also present with tightness of chest due to subclinical bronchospasm. So basically the word rhinitis refer to inflammation of the nasal passages. This inflammation can cause a variety of annoying symptoms including sneezing, itching, nasal congestion, runny nose and post nasal drip. So allergic rhinitis is a symptomatic disorder of the nose induced by uh, allergen exposure due to an IgE mediated inflammation of membranes lining of nose. It is clinically defined as symptomatic condition with four major symptoms uh, such as anterior or posterior rhinorrhea, sneezing, nasal itching and nasal congestion. Now I'm going to the next slide that is etiology. So the etiology, the allergic rhinitis is the commonest chronic disease. Its causation is multifactorial. Manifestation is multifocal. The symptoms of patient and type of allergy depend on the number of factors. Allergens are the casual substance of allergic rhinitis. They are capable for producing the body, produce IgE antibodies. Uh, so allergic rhinitis is a global health problem also with considerable economic and societal burden. About 40% of the world population is atopic and allergic rhinitis is a commonest of preservation of this atopic tendency. The reported incidence of allergic rhinitis in the western countries is 1.4 to 39%. Now the next slide. Factors may be classified as the factors which affect the allergic rhinitis are precipitating factor and predisposing factors. So the first one is precipitating factors. Aerobiological flora. This is determined by the allergen present in that environment of which inhalant allergen is more common. The nasal physiology is altered nasal cycle. Now the predisposing factors, heredity, Multiple gene interaction are responsible for allergic phenotype. Gene of chromosomes 5, 6, 11, 12, and 14 seems to control inflammatory process in atopy. A family history of similar or allied complaints is common. Endocrine, pubertal, marital, natal, menopausal condition have the potential to influence the nose significantly. Now the other factors are Physical changes in humidity, temperature, pollution of air can contribute to the development of allergic rhinitis. Living condition like residential and workplace condition also play an act. Age and sexes, it affect all the ages, both the sexes, industrialization and urbanization, IgA deficiency. So the allergic rhinitis symptoms result in sleep disturbance, fatigue, depressed mood, cognitive function compromises that impairs quality of life and productivity. Uh, there may be associated conjunctivitis can also be seen. The post nasal drips, ocean tube dysfunction, otitis media, sinusitis, and in children, uh, dental men occlusion and facial deformities can also be seen. Now the next slide is common allergens, pollens like amaranthus, cassia, prosopis, ricinus, albizia, panthenium, and artemisia. Molds like such as the commonest fungal spore in India are cladosporium, panicillium, trichoderma, etc. Insects like uh, bed bugs, cockroaches, house flies, mosquitoes, fleas, etc. Uh, in animals like pets, like cat and dog, also from horse, rabbit, genuipics, monkeys, and mice. 
dust mites such as dermatophagocytes can sanitize people ingestants like egg strawberries nuts fish citrus fruits and nuts also seem common allergens so allergic rhinitis is a respiratory disorder characterized by an inflammation of nasal mucous membrane caused by an ige mediated immune response consisting of an early acute response due to uh, degranulation of mast cells and a delayed prolonged response in which there is infiltration by leukocytes such as eosinophils basophils neutrophils and macrophages accompanied with edema now i'm going to the next slide that is the classification so basically on the basis of timing and duration of allergen exposure uh, and thus the allergen pathogenesis the allergic rhinitis is uh, classified as seasonal and perennial overall approximately 20% of all cases are strictly seasonal 40% are perennial and 40% mixed where perennial with seasonal exacerbation so the first one is seasonal in seasonal hay fever uh, it is a misnomer because neither it is caused by hay nor it produce fever in summer cold should not be confused with acute rhinitis that is caused by virus and not by allergens rose fever it is also a misnomer because colorful or fragrant flowering plant rarely cause allergy as their pollens are too heavy to be airborne so in aller seasonal allergic rhinitis the tree grass weed pollens outdoor molds spores are common seasonal allergens the symptoms typically appear during a defined season in which aero allergens are abundant in the outdoor air the length of seasonal exposure to these allergen is dependent on geographical locations uh, so therefore uh, fam familiarity with the pollinating season of the major trees uh, grasses weeds of the local makes the syndrome easier to diagnose like certain outdoor mold spores also display seasonal variation the highest level in the summer and fall months the typical symptoms uh, during pollen exposure include the explosive onset of profuse watery rhinorrhea itching and sneezing along with frequent allergic symptoms of the eyes it is very important um the next is congestion also occur but usually is not the most troubling symptom the onset and offset of symptoms usually track the seasonal pollen counts however the uh, hyper sense responsiveness to irritant triggers which trouble from the inflammatory reaction of the late phase and priming responses often persist after cessation of the pollen season such triggers include uh, this is very important tobacco smoke noxious odors changes in temperature and exercise now the next slide is perennial in perennial allergic rhinitis caused by allergen that are present throughout the year include animal dander cosmetic molds food and other pets the ear uh, round exposure to dust mite cockroaches indoor molds cat dogs and other denders uh, leads to persistent tissue edema and infiltration with eosinophil mast cells th2 lymphocytes and macrophages a universal accepted uh, definition of perennial rhinitis does not exist basically most often it is defined as a disease that persists for longer than 9 month each year and produce two or more of the following symptoms serous and serous mucus hyper secretion a uh, nasal blockage caused by swollen a uh, nasal mucosa or sneezing paroxysms the next is nasal congestion and mucus production that is post nasal drip as we all know that the symptoms uh, predominate in most patient and sneezing itching watery rhinorrhea may be minimal now the next slide i'm going to the next slide that is clinical features diagnostic symptoms include the following like nasal pruritus paroxysm of sneezing rhinorrhea pale bluish edematous nasal mucosa bulky edematous turbinate with bluish purple tinge of the mucosa mucosa coated with clear and mucoid secretion 
thickening of the nasal septums. So uh, as we all know that the allergic rhinitis is also known as hay fever. So a hay fever is an allergic reaction to pollen. Pollen comes from the flowering trees, grass, weeds. Uh, if you are allergic to pollen, you will notice your symptoms are worse on hot, dry days when winds carries the pollen. On rainy days, pollen often is washed to the ground, which means you are less likely to breathe it. Your allergies can vary depending on the time of year. So allergy that uh, occur in the spring are often due to tree pollens. Allergic that occur in the summer are often due to grass and wheat pollens. Allergy that occur in the fall are often due to ragweeds. Now the next slide I'm going to is classical signs. The sign and symptoms basically. So the first one is nasal stuffiness, congestion, sneezing and runny nose, itchy nose, throat and eyes, headaches, sinus pain, dark circles under the eyes, increased mucus in the nose and throat, fatigue and malaise, like a general feeling of discomfort, sore throat from mucus dripping down the throat, that is post nasal drip, wheezing and coughing and troubling breath. So symptoms of allergic rhinitis vary from person to person. Uh, we all know that. Although the term rhinitis refer only the nasal symptoms, many people also have symptoms that affect the eyes, throat and ears. Sleep may be disrupted as well. Symptoms may include the following. Uh, so basically, nose, the watery nasal discharge can be seen, blocked nasal passages, sneezing, nasal itching, post-nasal drip, loss of taste, facial pressures or pain. In eyes, uh, we can see itchy red eyes, a feeling of greetiness in the eyes, swelling and dark discoloration of the skin below the eyes. Um, next one is throat and ears. In throat and ears, uh, we can see sore throat, hoarse voice, congestion or popping of the itching ear, in itching in the throat or ears in sleep uh, basically we can see the mouth breathing frequent awaking daytime fatigue trouble doing normal activities so basically with perennial allergic rhinitis the predominant symptom include post nasal drip persistent nasal congestion and trouble sleeping Now, at the last, I would like to discuss little about the risk factor of allergic rhinitis the risk factors for allergic rhinitis include the following, the presence of other allergic diseases such as asthma and edema, parental rhinitis, allergic sanitization to common household aeroallergens, obesity and being overweight, elevated exhaled nitric oxide, high total serum IgE, exposure to parental smoking, exposure to pets, genetic disk predisposition, exposure to fossil fuel and traffic related pollutants. So this was all about allergic rhinitis from my part. Now I'm going to discuss a case with you all. I'm going to the next slide. Uh, so a male patient of age 26 year reported at my clinic with the complaint of cold, sneezing, lacrimation and watery nasal discharge since last four months. The sneezing starts suddenly 10 to 15 in a row and it is aggravated in morning, dust mite, cold drinks, change of weather. The warm drinks relieve for same times. During this, he had profuse watery nasal discharge with itching of nose and profuse lacrimation with burning and redness of eyes. Now the history of present illness of my patient is, patient was apparently well two years back, but his complaints started when he went to village with his friends and he took bath in pond for uh, four to five hours. After that, he started feeling difficulty in breathing along with frequent sneezing and nasal discharge. I'm going to the next slide. Now the past history of my patient, he had a past medical history of pulmonary tuberculosis, 
a four year back and no other history of past illness in family history father died of diabetes and bp and mother has hypertension now the mental journals of my patient is the patient said only thing that was bothering him is not getting relief in spite of taking medicines fastidious in nature he gets irritated easily since the complaint started become angry on seeing mess in the room wants everything neat and clean now the physical journals of my patient the thermal reaction my patient is chilly appetite he has good appetite taste uh, he has uh, sweet food uh, he has a craving for sweet food digestion weak full of full on eating small amount thirst he become thirsty so often and drink 3 to 3 and 1/2 liter of water in a day uh, the urine is normal maturation sleep disturb sleep the patient did not feel refreshed in morning dreams uh, basically not specific uh, so on auscultation the wheezing sound heard over both side of lungs uh, body temperature was 98 degree fahrenheit the blood pressure is 130 by 80 mm of hg and pulse rate were 82 beats per minute respectively so uh, on local examination we can see swollen nasal turbinates redness and congestion of nose and throat and redness of eyes so the analysis of my case is after case taking uh, all mental physical journals and particular symptoms were classified analyzed and each symptom evaluated as per their merit among mental symptoms anxiety irritable fastidious physical journals unquenchable thirst uh, disturbed sleeps were taken for constructing the totality among particular sneezing like cold aggravation morning aggravation dust aggravation burning eyes redness of eyes nasal itching were considered in the totality so thank you so much for staying with us we will starting the presentation and training how can we repertorize this case with the help of radar opus so i will be sharing my screen to all of you so this is dr shivangi and i will be demonstrating you all about how you can get started with radar opus and how can we repertorize the case and one thing more before i start let me explain to our viewers how this interface work on the right side panel of your screen you have a sh short chat box you may type your question or whatever message you have right there press button next to it to send it to us okay now i'm going to share my screen with you then you'll be able to see the software on your screen so whenever you open your radar opus software you will be able to see your screen in this way synthesis treasure is by default open these icon are known as icon bar or tool bar now first i am going to tell you about these five primary icons which are present on the left side of this vertical line they are known as primary icons consist of repertories references patient management remedies and families so basically for repertorization first i am going to the repertories icon after clicking on this icon all the list of repertories will open in front of you so whatever repertory you want to open just scroll from this list else you can type the name of the repertory in the search bar so today i am going to do my repertorization from synthesis adonis it is a successor version of synthesis treasure the number of remedies and rubric has been increased in this repertory so after clicking on this synthesis adonis you can see here my synthesis adonis have open on my main display screen So for doing repertorization from this repertory I will be needing few icon the first icon is this binocular find rubric after clicking on this icon this navigation window will appear on your screen um with all the chapters that are present in this particular repertory so for today's repertorization the first symptom of my patient is my patient is having anxiety about his health so anxiety is a mental symptom first i am going to the mind chapter mind 
Now I'm going to type here anxiety. Health about. Now my rubric is here from mind chapter. Anxiety is my rubric. Health about is my sub rubric. Now we are having multiple clipboards here. They are just like our repertorial sheet. For repertorization, you have to add your rubric into this clipboard and it will automatically get repertorized. So for adding any rubric into the clipboard, we have three methods. The first method is dragging and dropping. I'm going to add this rubric in my clipboard with the help of my first method that is dragging and dropping with the help of your cursor you can drag it and drop it the next two method i'm going to tell tell you with my two subsequent rubrics now the next symptom of my patient is my patient is uh, irritable all the time with the complaints of this uh, nasal discharges with the complaint of uh, this Renitis. So irritability is also a mental symptom. I'm going to the mind chapter. Mind. Irritability. Knows with complaints of. Now my rubric is here from mind chapter. Irritability is my rubric. Knows with complaints of is my sub rubric now i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with my second method and my second method is plus key on my keyboard the plus button on your keyboard with the help of this button you can add your rubric into the clipboard so you can see here as soon as i click on this plus button my rubric has been added here now the next symptom of my patient is my patient is fastidious in nature so fast ED is also a mental symptom. For that, I'm going to the mind chapter. And I'm typing here. Fast ED is. Now my rubric is here. Oh, OK, wait a moment. Fast ED is. Now my rubric is here for mind chapter. My patient is fast tedious. So fast tedious is my rubric. Now I'm going to add this third rubric into the clipboard with the help of my third method. And my third method is this icon. Take the current rubric icon. After clicking on this icon, you can see here my rubric has been added into this clipboard. OK, now the next symptom. My patient is having unquenchable thirst. So for unquenchable thirst, I'm going to the stomach chapter stomach first unquenchable it's already mentioned here so i click on it now you can see here from the stomach chapter my rubric is here thirst unquenchable now i'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of my first method as i told you my first method is dragging and dropping so i simply drag it and drop it Now the next symptom of my patient is my patient is having disturbed sleep, having the problem of disturbed sleep. Uh, he cannot get the full uh, sleep or he cannot uh, get full relief. So he cannot feel refreshed, basically. So for disturbed sleep, I'm going to the sleep chapter. I'm going to type here disturbed. Now my rubric is here from sleep chapter disturbed. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of my second method. And my second method is plus key on my keyboard. I can see here after pressing my plus button, my rubric has been added into this clipboard. Now the next symptom. My patient is my patient is having the problem of uh, violent sneezing. So for sneezing, I'm going to the nose chapter nose. Sneezing, violent. Now my rubric is here from nose chapter sneezing violent. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method. And my third method is this icon. Take the current rubric icon. After clicking on this icon, you can see here my rubric has been added into my clipboard. But the next symptom of my patient is my patient is having uh, frequent sneezing or having aggravation in sneezing uh, during morning time. So for sneezing, uh, for morning aggravation in sneezing, I'm going to the nose chapter again. 
Morning. Uh, my rubric is here from uh, nose chapter sneezing morning aggravation. I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of first method dragging and dropping. The next symptom of my patient is my patient is having frequent sneezing. Also having the problem of frequent sneezing. Now I'm going to the nose chapter again. Nose sneezing frequent. My rubric is here from nose chapter sneezing frequent. This is a complaint of my patient. I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of my second method. And my second method is plus button on my keyboard. As soon as I click on it, you can see here my rubric has been added. Now the next symptom of my patient is my patient is having aggravation in sneezing in whenever uh, he uh, get affected uh, from changes in weather. From changes in weather, he uh, has aggravation in sneezing. So I'm going to the nose chapter again. Nose sneezing. Weather changeable. Now this is my rubric from nose chapter. Sneezing is my rubric. Weather changeable are my sub rubric. Now I'm going to add this rubric into the clipboard with the help of third method. And my third method is this icon take the current rubric icon after clicking on this icon you can see here my rubric has been added into the clipboard my patient is having the last symptom of my patient is my patient is having the coryza uh, with lacrimation also having the problem of lacrimation during coryza so for uh, this coryza i'm going to the nose chapter again nose coryza Lacrimation with. Now, this is my rubric from nose chapter, Coriza lacrimation with. Now, I'm going to add this rubric, last rubric into the clipboard with the help of my first method that is dragging and dropping. No, so for analysis, uh, for repertorization, I'm going to my this clipboard. After clicking on this clipboard, you will get your repertorization, your analysis, you will get your chapters, rubrics, sub rubrics, and here you will get your probable remedies. So uh, arsenic album is the highest grading remedy among all this probable remedy list. Arsenic album covers 10 rubrics from this list. And the total of these is 21. If you um, plus all these like 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, it's 21. The Nux Vomica covers 8 rubric out of 9 out of 10 sorry and the total is 13 the natrum york covers eight rubrics out of 10 the total is 12. so if you want to read any of the remedy from your probable remedy list just double click on it and your remedy will open on your main display screen like this with the multimedia image of their plant now i'm going back to my analysis uh, suppose if you want to read natrum york from this probable remedy list so just double click on it Again, now my Netromior would open on my main display screen. So in the same manner, you can read any of your remedy from your probable remedy list. No need to go to this references or remedies icon. Now I'm going back to my analysis. Now at the last, now I'm going to save my analysis. So for that, I'm going to the analysis icon. This drop down next to this analysis icon. Save current analysis. Now the, my patient name is Ramesh. Sharma. Now my analysis has been saved with Ramesh Sharma name. So you can uh, save your analysis in this way. Okay, now I'm going back to my slide. So here, arsenic album is the highest grading remedy. 
Uh, let me stop this presentation. Now, in prescription, the medicine I have prescribed is arsenic album, 203 doses, 8 hourly, followed by placebo, PL, 3 pills, that is TDS, in 7 days were, was prescribed on first visit, considering the repertorial totality. So, I have given some general management to my patient, like reduce dust and dust mites in the home, control molds indoor and out, outdoors, avoid exposure to plants like pollens and animals. So, in the next visit, in the second follow up, you can see here the sneezing reduced, like in five or six row. Nasal discharge reduced with slight burning and lacrimation. Nasal itching increased in this time sleep sound irritability reduced to mark extent on examination the congestion reduced in the chest of the patient uh, the congestion is reduced i have prescribed arsenic album 200 single dose state orally with placebo four pills bd for 10 days now the management this time i have given to my patient is like Along with medicine, counseling was also done to calm the mental irritability and other symptoms of my patient. Now in the third follow-up, in the final visit, the sneezing reduced further one or two row with slight nasal discharge, no nasal, no nasal itching this time, no burning of eyes and lacrimation can be seen, no irritability on examination, no congestion, no redness of eyes. So this time I have prescribed placebo BD for 10 days to my patient. So this was all about allergic rhinitis and how we can repertorize case with the help of synthesis Adonis radar opus software from my part. So, all right, now I would like to request all our viewers to comment in the chat box with their questions now. We will begin the question answer session. So, the first question a learner wants to know, is allergic rhinitis ever cause of other problem? Uh, basically, uh, Yes, some known complications include ear infection, sinusitis, recurrent sore throat, cough, headache, fatigue, irritability, um, altered sleep pattern and poor school performance. Occasionally, the children may develop altered facial growth and orthodontics problems. Allergy treatment can eliminate or elevates most of these problems. So uh, you can see, you can say the allergic rhinitis uh, can be caused from other problems. Now I'm going to take the next question from the viewer side is, who might get allergic rhinitis? Uh, basically uh, this question is like, um, allergic rhinitis affect approximately 20% of people of all ages. The risk of developing allergic rhinitis is much higher in people with asthma and eczema and people who have family history of asthma and allergic rhinitis. Allergic rhinitis can begin at any age. Although most people first develop symptoms in childhood or young adulthood, so the symptoms are often more severe in children and in people in their 30s and 40s. However, the severity of symptoms uh, tend to vary throughout a person's life. Some people go through periods during which they have no symptoms at all. Okay. The Another question from a viewer side is, what are the triggers of allergic rhinitis? Yes, the outdoor allergens such as pollens from trees, grass, weeds, and mold spores, indoor allergens such as pet hairs or denders, dust mites and molds, irritants, irritants like uh, cigarette smoke, perfume, diesel, exhaustants, these are the tr triggers of allergic rhinitis basically. Okay, now, now I'm going to take the next question from a viewer side is, 
what can influence the severity of allergy season okay uh, basically weather can influence the timing and severity of the allergy season a mild winter often leads to a more severe pollen season the grass season varies the most if spring is warmer and uh, wetter than usual then more grass grow which leads to a more severe season during the late spring and summer however the rain can have benefit as well for instance rain can wash pollen uh, that has already been released out in the air okay so the last question i think we have almost taken up all the questions to let's take the last question from a viewer side is what are the symptoms of non allergic rhinitis a viewer want to know uh, symptoms of non allergic rhinitis uh, for most people the symptom of non allergic rhinitis include post nasal drip runny or stuffy nose sneezing diminished sense of smell uh, rarely non allergic rhinitis cause a fuel smelling crust to a uh, form inside the nose the interior nasal tissue may bleed when you attempt to remove the crust so these are the symptoms of non allergic rhinitis so let's a wind here wind up here thank you so much everyone i would like to thank all the viewers and the homeopathic fraternity who have joined us here today thank you thank you so much have a great day keep learning keep improving okay thank you so much